In April 1555, the royal family were gathered at Hampton Court Palace in anticipation of a fantastic event. The Queen, Mary Tudor, was pregnant and she was expected to give birth any day. Her rooms were meticulously prepared by her ladies-in-waiting. The outcome of this birth would affect the entire country. Mary was Catholic, and an heir would ensure that England remained Catholic. In preparation for the eagerly anticipated birth, Mary entered a period of confinement. When a queen had a baby, that was a big event. There was a special ritual for it. It started here in chapel. The ceremony was called the Royal Confinement. When Mary came round this door into the gallery built by Henry VIII, she was absolutely buoyant. God was on her side. She knew this baby was going to come. She knew it was going to be a boy. She was going to cement the Habsburg Tudor dynasty. Uh, but of course, everything depended on what happened next. This is the great watching chamber. That door over there is the most important door at Hampton Court because it's the gateway to the privy apartments. And beyond that door was the royal presence chamber. And beyond that, in a se series of further rooms, uh, was the confinement chamber, the special room that had been prepared for Mary to have this baby. When Mary married the Catholic King Philip of Spain on July 25, 1554, it united two of the most powerful dynasties in the world, the English Tudors and the Spanish Habsburgs. The ceremony, here at Winchester Cathedral, was lavish. Banners and streamers emblazoned with Spanish and English regalia hung from the ceiling. All they needed now to make the match complete was a Catholic heir. Mary's mission was to repair the damage done by her father, Henry VIII, who had been forced to break off England's ties with Rome when he sacrificed wife after wife in a desperate attempt to produce a male heir. When Mary came to the throne, she set about restoring England to Roman Catholicism, and a child was an essential part of this plan. But Mary was already 38 by the time she married. By Tudor standards, this was very late to be starting a family. So when her physicians announced her pregnancy just two months after the wedding, it was as if all her prayers had been answered. But what had she told them that had made them so sure of her pregnancy? At the time, there was an almost obsessive interest in royal gynecological matters. Mary's most intimate details were soon spread from her ladies-in-waiting to the rest of the court. So that as far away as Rome and Spain, ambassadors and heads of state were discussing the news that Mary's menstrual cycle had stopped, her belly was swollen, and her breasts were producing milk. The Spanish ambassador, Simon Renard, wrote to inform the emperor, The queen is veritably with child, for she has felt the babe. And there are other likely and customary symptoms, such as the state of her breasts. At the time, everything pointed towards the news that Mary was pregnant. All of Mary's doctors were men, and therefore excluded from her bedchamber. At the Royal College of Physicians, experts can give us an idea of just how difficult it was for them to monitor the pregnancy. The problem for these physicians was actually getting access to the Queen. They were not allowed to examine her, they were not allowed to, to touch her, they were not even allowed to question her or, or approach her in, in any way. So it was actually very difficult for them to assess what she was suffering from and, and to treat her. The only people who could examine Mary were lower down the pecking order. They were not classically trained. They were the midwives and their equipment was limited. It was believed that a ring hung over the mother's belly would circle if the child was a girl and swing from side to side if it was a boy. It would be easy for the midwives to ensure that Mary only saw what she wanted to see. The swinging ring confirming a male Catholic heir. Midwives may not have had any formal training, but they did have years of experience. 
and for the first time their knowledge was collected in a book called The Birth of Mankind. The book included drawings of different fetal positions and remedies for a difficult labour. It was the only advice available for women like Mary on how to behave. During pregnancy, it was seen as very much the responsibility of the woman to uh, manage her body in the sense that she had to be very careful not to have what were termed as, as longings, uh, to think about particular kinds of food or to, uh, to look on animals for too long. Um, and monster births, the births of deformed children, were often blamed on what was referred to during this period as maternal imagination. And it was very much the idea that what she saw would somehow affect the child in, in her womb. If what she saw was important, what she ate was even more important. Many types of food were thought to upset the delicate balance of a pregnant woman. So poor Mary had to survive mainly on toast and wine, which apparently would prevent anything growing to the child. Although dating a pregnancy was notoriously difficult, the physicians predicted a birth in late April 1555. To ensure nothing went wrong, Mary was placed in confinement for the final month of her pregnancy. This meant she was literally locked away in a secret part of the palace where no one could see her. The fires were stoked, the windows were covered with hangings, even the keyholes were blocked. She was like a prisoner in her own palace. All Mary could do was wait. But the waiting went on and on, and soon her pregnancy entered its tenth month. To us, one of the strange things is that the confinement did go on so long, but of course, in the 16th century, this didn't seem quite so odd, because the theory of childbirth was that boys took nine months in the womb, but girls, because they were supposed to be the weaker vessel, you know, could take longer, up to a year. But for Mary, the waiting never ended. More than a year passed at Hampton Court. Gradually, her worst nightmare came true. The baby never came. Furious with Mary's failure to produce an heir, Philip left for the continent. Mary must have gone through the complete range of emotions on the other side of that door because when she went into her confinement shape, she was totally confident. But of course, you know, four months later, it had all fallen apart. Was Mary fooling everyone to gain political advantage? Or were her strange symptoms ominous signs that she was seriously unwell? Doctors now believe the answer lay inside Mary's head.